Well, hello there. Do you come here often? Because I certainly do. Welcome back to another episode with Huddersfield Town. Now, the form has picked up recently and we are shooting ourselves back up the table. Uh, but in this episode, we do start our FA Cup campaign at home to Sunderland. And then we do take on Blackburn Rovers who are in the relegation zone. I really should stop picking teams in the relegation zone because it's easy, isn't it? It's really easy to win those games. I mean, what you really want to see is me take on Manchester City and just get battered 5-0. Because there's nothing more joyous in someone's life than watching these videos and seeing me in pain. In the last episode, we took on Aston Villa, who were bottom of the table, and beat them by three goals to two. Although we were 3-0 up at half-time and pretty comfortable after Steve Mounier's first half hat-trick. But as I mentioned 20 seconds ago, our form has picked up in the league and we see ourselves in a more comfortable position. Now, following the win over Aston Villa in the last episode, we did take on Legion United in the derby at home following that game. And after going 1-0 down for a Kimar Roof early goal, uh, we did manage to come back and win by three goals to two including this strike from Neil Morpé uh, inside the box I mean he's been on fire recently and uh, Fabian Scher did win us the game in uh, the 70th minute uh, with this close range strike after Steve Mounier hit the bar we did follow it up with an away trip of Fulham and Neil Morpé once again got two goals as we managed to win by two goals to nil away from home he's clinical he's as clinical as you want him to be as your 11 million pound striker should be we then followed it up with a 2-0 defeat away at Bournemouth in a very disappointing appearance but then we beat Watford by three Three goals to one, and once again, nil more pay scored twice. I mean, the bloke is about to become our top goal scorer at this rate. He's got six goals this month. Although Steve Munier is still our top goal scorer. It does mean that we take on Sunderland at home in the FA Cup and Blackburn away, as I mentioned earlier in the episode. But we do see ourselves in 10th position in the league, and uh, well, we're not too far off the top six. We're like nine points off, and we got the same amount of games as Man City. Although we do take them on soon, so yeah. We might see if we can cut the gap to them. I doubt it, but we could try. So Paul Clement is still doing the press conferences for me because I still really can't be bothered to turn up to them. And he said that he hopes to continue to upset the odds. I mean, I hope so as well, because if I get into a relegation battle, I'm in trouble with both the board, the fans, the players, the va the fans, the vans as well, the vans, the fans, the vans and the fans. I mean, I've broken myself there. I went to check my profile to see if my stats have improved recently uh, because we've been managing Huddersfield for about four seasons now. I've seen that my managing finances bar is nearly full. They don't know, do they? They really don't know what's happening at the club at the moment. I mean, I've said it so many times this season. The finances are fucked. I've also seen that my win percentage is only 37%. That is really shit, isn't it? That is really shit. Mauricio Pochettino was also sat by Bournemouth recently, despite the fact they beat us 2-0. I mean, he's gone from Champions League to nearly the Championship. You really don't want to see that. Mesut Ozil has also come out into the press to demand first team football, despite the fact that I have been playing him recently, so not sure why he's come out to the press to say that. You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch. Paul Clement also said that he's focused on doing things right at the club. Maybe stop praising the other team's players and stop praising our own players and stop saying that it's a surprise that we're this high up the league. Maybe then you'll be doing things right, Paul. I mean, it's a bit harsh on Sergio Romero there. I'm sure he's a lovely bloke. Uh, this is great. Eros Cresta has decided to leave the club to join Monterey in Mexico for 8.25 million. A player that, as I said, that I wasn't really playing this year. He was injured from the start of the season. Oli Berg's in the form of his life. I don't really need him anymore. Fabian Scherz also injured himself for three months with broken ribs. I'm sure you're all enjoying the under-23s updates, but they got knocked out of the check and trade trophy by Doncaster. So, yeah, there won't be uh, any Maximilian Philip hat-tricks anymore. Bournemouth also offered me a job interview recently, but I declined it because I don't really want to join a club down the league. Like, I've got this team up to 10th. Why am I going to join a team that are 17? And they beat me as well, so why am I going to join? You. John McGinn has also committed himself to another four years at the club, and I've also increased his a minimum a fee a release clause for Champions League clubs. McGinn Esther running the Huddersfield midfield again. Hal Robson Carner has also handed in a transfer request recently because he's not been playing. I mean, the fact that he's a backup. I got him from Carabag. I saved you from Azerbaijan, and this is how you repay me. Cole Darlo has also left the club to join Young Boys on loan for the rest of the season. Third choice goalkeeper wasn't even playing for me. What's the point? Eros Grosser's transfer has also been confirmed midway through December. And unfortunately, the day after Oli Berg got himself injured for three weeks. Just my luck, isn't it? Just my luck. David Raya has also said that he wants to leave the club because he's not happy with the first team football that he's playing. And the same with Marcus Lorente as well. See, I've got all these backup dancers, but there's nothing I can do with them. We're also about to take on Sunderland. I found out that they've sold 6,000 tickets.
used to be in our way end. And Ryan Giggs is their manager. Ryan Giggs. I mean, we all know that would never happen in real life. Because the only team that he's ever going to manage is United. And we all know that. The board also asked me on January the 1st if I wanted to change the season expectations. I know what they're doing there. They're trying to make me change the expectations so they have a reason to sack me. Philip Billing has also left the club to join Ajax for 5.25 million alongside three other Premier League midfielders in Ainsley, Maitland, Niles, and the Herrera and Granite Shaka. They've got four midfielders there. Are they going to be playing two defenders, eight midfielders, and one striker? I mean, that wouldn't work because that doesn't make sense because that would be 12 players on the pitch. Unless they don't play a goalkeeper. And now I'm going to move on because I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. I am pleased to announce our first signing of this transfer window. And I say first signing. I did actually sign him in the summer. I didn't sign him in January. Uh, I was only able to register him now. But joining us on a free transfer is Cameron Jerome. Uh, the only reason I signed him is because I couldn't sign Charlie Adam. And I definitely needed some uh, experience in the Premier League from the Stoke City 2012-2013 team. That's literally the only reason I signed him. I looked at the Wikipedia page like last night and I thought, which player could I still sign? And Cameron Jerome was it. He was playing in Turkey last as well. So we've already got some success with Trezeguet. Hence why I've signed him. And now we move into our game against Sunderland at home in the FA Cup. And I've gone with a 4-4-2 formation. And we do start off with new signing Cameron Jerome up front with Hal robson Carnu. Uh, Wilfred Zaha and Trezeguet play on the wings with John McGinn and Oxley chamberlain playing centre midfield. Connor Cody partners Matt Clark at centre-back with Dehaney coming in for the injured Wan-Bissaka. And David Raya starts off in goal for the first time in, like, what, four months? He's my cup goalkeeper. It's the only time he's really going to play. Other than when Perrin gets injured, which is very rare at the moment. Sunderland have set up in the same 4-4-2 that we have, so it looks like we're going to balance each other out in this game, but they seem to have a graveyard of Premier League talent. Sam Klukas, Andre Wisdom, Alex McCoy. I mean, Sunderland is basically a Premier League graveyard anyway, so it fits perfectly with them. This is a game we cannot be complacent about, although that makes no sense seeing as I'm playing Hal robson Carnu and Cameron Jerome up front. So the first highlight of the game went to Sunderland, and Sam Klukas played it over the top for Whelan to run onto, but Raya made a good save to equal it. And then a few minutes later, Zaha played the ball into the box for Cameron Jerome to head straight on goal, so already successful signing. But then on the counter-attack, Edward Whelan, who is a regen on loan from Fulham, then uh, got the ball 25 yards out and fired it past Raya to give a 1-0 lead to Sunderland. Not really how I expected it to go. It got even worse as a minute later, Lyndon Gooch's ball found Stuart Dallas and he headed it across the goal for Danny Ward, a former Huddersfield player, to give them a 2-0 lead. I mean, what is happening? We're 2-0 down to a team in League One. At halftime, I decided to change the tactics and go 4-1-2-1-2 like we have done for the last few episodes. And I brought on Mesut Ozil because that is not a sign of desperation, isn't it? And only two minutes into the second half, Demiko Dehaney got the ball back from a throw in and put a lovely ball into the box for Wilfred Zaha to fire it in and he was called offside. And then when I went to watch the replay, the bloke wasn't even offside. How the fuck is the referee given that decision? Generally, how is he given that decision? Things got desperate as I sent on Steve Mounier on to replace Cameron Jerome. And then Mesut Ozil fired this free kick against the bar and it was cleared out. And we lost the game 2-0. We're out of the FA Cup in the third round to a team in League One. I probably deserve that for the complacent team selection I picked. D'Amico Dehaney has also torn his calf muscle, which means he's up for four months. Great. So my backup right back's already out for the season now. So I've only got one right back and I haven't got that much money to bring in a new one. So Ryan Giggs uh, was pleased that his team upset the odds and they upset the odds like he upset his brother all those years ago. So in one of the closest games in the FA Cup, Sutton United nearly came back from 3-0 down against Arsenal and only lost 3-2. And yet we lost to Sunderland 2-0. How does that work? The board also wanted us to reach the fifth round of the FA Cup, but they said that we met expectations by getting ourselves knocked out in the third round by a League One side. This game literally makes no sense. The fans were also less than happy, apparently, with Cameron Jerome after he signed for us. I mean, let's give him a few more games. I've got City coming up, so I might unleash him against them. The FA were also silent after I criticised them in the post-match press conference. I mean, Wilfred Zaha getting a goal chalked off for offside when it wasn't even offside. I can't believe they don't use VAR in this competition at my ground, which has VAR. Why am I saying VAR? is V-A-R. Why am I saying VAR as if it's a word? Fabian Scher's contract is up at the end of the season as well, and he's rejected three contract offers from clubs abroad, so he's still going to be milking the finances from us. We also put in a loan bid for Lucas Moura for the rest of the season, but he rejected us because I said he would be on the bench. And finally, I offered out Marcus Lorente uh, to a few clubs, and Philadelphia Union wanted to take him on loan for the rest of the season. Am I some sort of cunt? And now we move into our game against Blackburn. Now, we do need to get a win in this episode, so I have reverted back to the 4-1-2-1-2 that we've been 
been playing recently. Uh, Connor Cody and uh, Christopher Ayer will play as our centre-backs, with Marcus Lorente playing ahead of them. Trezeguet comes in for the injured Oli Burke, I'll play on the right-hand side, as I've been playing Max Phillip there, but he's not been very useful, let's say. And I've pushed Max Phillip up front to play alongside Steve Mounier, with Meza Ozil supporting them in the number 10 role. This Blackburn team doesn't really scare me at all. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. They've got Daniel Sturridge playing left wing, who's about 35 now. Like, this should be a walk in the park. It really should be a walk in the park. I should tone down the big-headedness for a little bit, because we did just get knocked out of the FA Cup by Sunderland. So, let's say we're going to win, like, 4-0... But it's not going to be that easy. And it said a lot that it wasn't going to be that easy as Wilfred Zaha got injured. And that was the first highlight of the game in injury time of the first half. But this shows my philosophy of Huddersfield that we don't essentially have to be winning the game early as long as we win the fucking game at the end of the match. And obviously, all together now, it was nil-nil at half time. And with 70 minutes on the clock and still zero highlights in the match, I decided to do a tactical masterstroke and send on Nick Powell in replacement for Meza Ozil. And it worked as Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, the substitute, played a very poor ball through on goal, but Fosu Mensah tried to play it back to his keeper. Steve Mounier stole it and scored again this season. You love to see it absolute shithouse victory incoming is exactly what i would be saying if manu garcia didn't fire this ball in in the 88th minute to give blackburn a 1-1 draw and a point don't worry boys we're back to normal now